Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift our hands up. Keep on playing behind me there, buddy. Let's close your eyes, focusing on the Holy Ghost. This is his time now. This is his time now. This is why you came. Quiet yourself down. Quiet your soul down, your spirit down. Quiet yourself down. Focus in on the Holy Ghost. He speaks to a heart and a soul that is quieted on the inside. It's not about necessarily noise. It's a spiritual posture. It's called silence. The Bible talks about a holy silence. Let it come into your heart right now. Anxiety, stress, they keep you from hearing God. Go ahead and just let him begin to melt things off of you right now. You're in the presence of God Almighty. He's in this building. Jesus is walking around. Allow him to have your burden. So I want you to just put your burden on the Lord right now. Cast over your burden. What is what is heavy on you? Is it a person? Say their name out loud. Is it someone in your family? Say their names out loud. Is it a sickness or disease? The moment that Jesus becomes more real than your sickness is the moment you will be healed. The moment Jesus becomes more real than your sickness or your problem is the moment you will be healed. Don't focus on your problems right now. Focus on the face of Jesus. Hand them over to the Lord. No shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. No wall you won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down, coming after me. Sing it out. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down, coming after me. One more time. One more time. Come on. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Come on. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Every hand in the air, every hand in the air, every eye closed right now. Let's touch him, let's touch him, let's touch him. Let's just touch him, let's just touch him. He's already beginning to move. He's already beginning to touch certain ones of you. He's beginning to touch certain people already. No wall you won't kick down. Fly you won't tear down. Coming after me. Keep singing that. Keep singing that. There's no shadow. No shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. You've been struggling with depression. You've been struggling with depression. Be set free right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it go. Just let it go. Let it go. You've been tormented long enough. You've had no hope. You've had no hope in torment. Come on, let him take it from you. you got to allow Jesus to take your depression. Allow him to take those feelings. Lift it up to him. No wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't Holy Lamb of God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Begin praying in the Holy Ghost. If you have a prayer language, begin praying in the Holy Ghost. The fire of God is already beginning to fall. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. Him da 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 ba 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 ka da da. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Spirit man, spirit man, prayer. Shen da da bo sa ta da da ba ka da ba ba. Bring da 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 ba ho. Don't watch me. Don't watch me. Talk to Jesus. Don't watch me. Talk to Jesus. Him ba 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 na 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 na. Bring da da bo 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 bo. Come on, come on. Lift him up, lift him up. Let's go. Lift him up, lift him up. Lift him up, lift him up.
need to be set free. You need to let yourself be set free. As you praise God, the spirit of heaviness is going to lift off of you. He gives you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He will not praise himself for you. You have to open up your own mouth. This is not about a church thing going on right now. I don't care who's next to you on your left or your right. You will miss this moment if you do not become bold right now. If you are struggling with depression, if you have been struggling with thoughts of suicide, if you've been struggling with getting out of bed in the morning, you need to open your mouth and begin to intentionally praise God. Tell him how awesome he is. He deserves it from you. Tell him that he's mightier than your problems. Come on. Tell him that he's greater than what you're going through. Come on. Lift it up. This is a spiritual principle. This is not a church thing. This is a spiritual principle. This is a God thing. This is a way that he gave you to free yourself. He gave you a way to free yourself. Come on, lift him up. Out loud, out loud. I don't care who's beside you. Yeah, yeah, that's me. That's me, Gavin. I'm depressed. Well, don't look at me then. Lift him up. Oh, God, you're worthy. You're bigger than what I'm feeling right now. You're greater than where I'm at right now. You're greater than my problems right now. Holy Lamb. Somebody's getting delivered right over here now. I see it starting to move. He's touching you. All you got to do is obey his steps. Just obey the steps that he put for you. Just start lifting your mouth. He'll do the rest. You got to take an inch. You got to do your part. It's an inch. God goes a mile. God goes a mile. You do an inch. God goes a mile. Give him your mouth. Give him your praise. Some of you have serious heaviness. Heaviness about family members. Heaviness about sons and daughters. Come on, praise him right now. Praise him that he's working on their behalf. You don't know what to say, but God knows what to say. Praise him that he's doing something in your house. You don't know how to fix it, but God knows how to fix it. Praise him that he's on your case. You don't know what else to do. You've tried everything, but God still has some things in his back pocket. He knows what he's doing. Come on, praise him. He's always working. He's always working. Even if you don't see it right now, I'm telling you, he's working. Lift up your mouth and praise him that he's working. 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 Come in and out. Come in and out. Come in and Come in and scripture up on the board John chapter 1 you all can be seated in the presence of God Chris just hang with me a little bit everybody else thank you so much you can go to the back Chris stay with me John chapter 1 in the beginning was the word it already existed the word was with God the word was God next verse God created everything through him him the word is a him and nothing was created except through him the word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light 
to everyone. Praise God. Verse 14. So the word became human and made his home among us. Do you know the moment that Jesus came down, he wasn't just making his home for the 33 years he lived on earth? Because the Holy Spirit would be left in Jesus' stead to abide forever in the bodies of people who are willing to make him their home. Jesus started it, but the Holy Spirit continues. He is the Spirit of Jesus. He's the same Spirit that was beating inside of Jesus' chest. He's the Spirit that raised the body of Jesus back from the dead. He's the spirit that was inside of him that gave Jesus peace that even though he was going to the cross, he could say for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He was the same spirit that every time Jesus laid his hands on the spirit of God as the word came from the father because Jesus did nothing apart from what the father did. He saw the father do it. It went through the word who is Jesus and the Holy Spirit manifested every single healing. They were working in perfect cohesion together. A perfect trinity. A perfect that one cannot be found without the other. They can't be separated. The intimacy, the partnership is so close. We've never been able to describe it. Paul calls it a mystery. He says there's such a mystery of this. And he, he relates it to marriage. And he says when marriage comes together, a man and a woman, they come together and they have this unity. He said it's a mystery. It's the closest thing, he says, on earth that we can get to the union between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But he says we actually don't have English words. There's no language that can say and express truly the beauty of the intimate union between the Father, the Word who is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. We now know, as we talked about last week, that when we approach the Word, we're approaching a person. And when we approach this person, we sit down. We don't come quickly. We don't come haphazardly. It's not just another thing we do in our day where we throw the Bible down and we say, you know, because remember there was blood that was on this book for you and I to get it. There was a price that was paid so you and I could hold these beautiful pages. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you hugged your Bible? When's the last time you smelled your Bible? When's the last time you slept with your Bible? Gavin, what are you talking about right now? I'm talking about intimacy with the words that you think might have just been black ink on a page, but every single verse is alive and active and ready to do and create something in your life right now. And remember, as we approach a person, when we open the word, Jesus is opening his mouth. Hallelujah. Ephesians six seventeen, put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Remember that scripture was changed where the commas were put in a different place and the words are put around. It actually means take the Holy Spirit's sword. So this isn't your sword first. This is the Holy Spirit's sword first. So he takes the sword in his hand, and then Hebrews 4.12 says, the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. Remember, it's not one edge. Why does it say it's two-edged? Because it doesn't just protect what you can see in front of you. When the word is used, the Holy Spirit also, Psalm 91, he'll be in front of you, and he'll be your rear guard. He's taking care of the things that you can't fix. He's taking care of the things that you can't see. When you partner with the Holy Spirit in the Word, whatever way you swing this thing, it's going to have some action and death 
to the spirit of the devil. Whatever way this thing is swung, it's going to take out the things resisting you. You could swing it this way. He says, whatever way. He said, I have angles that you have no idea about that I can touch your sister through. I got angles with this thing that you got no idea about. That if it comes through your mouth, your children can be touched and blessed. I got angles with this thing where a soul that's been in depression for the last 20 years can hear this thing coming out of your mouth through me and come out in a night. I got angles. So, John 15, 2 through 4, the Holy Spirit takes the sword and it separates between joint and marrow, soul and spirit. We know demons don't have joints and marrow. They're finding bodies to be into. So the word wasn't just meant for the devil. Now we know the word is meant for me. The sword is meant for me. When you approach the Bible, you're approaching a person, but you're also approaching something that's about to cut you. You've got to be ready. Because let me tell you this, and when people come and they're like, yeah, I'm like, how long you been saved? And they're like, nothing's changing in my life. Nothing's going on. I'm like, how long you been saved? Oh, you know, 25 years. I just get nothing, man. You're still terrible. I'm always depressed. I'm like, I know on the spot they don't read their Bible. Why? Because if you read the Bible for the last 25 years, you know how many times you've been cut? You know how many things have fallen off of you that would be hindering you? Do you know how many things are not a part of you anymore? Because this does the job. This does the job. So every branch that does not bear fruit, John 15, 2 through 4, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. Remember, God rewards your fruitfulness with more cutting. He says, you've, you've, you've really got a lot of fruit. Good job. Now let me give you a little bit more so you can produce more fruit, right? That you can bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. So you remember at this point, Jesus is there. He's been talking to thousands. But at this point, he looks at his own disciples and he says, listen, you guys, I've been talking to for the last three years. You've been following me. We've been walking to cities together. And in that time, in the last three and a half years, every word I've said has been a sword. We showed you what that meant. The rich young ruler was an example we gave. How about when they were arguing about who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? Think about that. The Bible says that they're all there standing, arguing who's going to be the greatest. And Jesus walks up on this conversation with his disciples. He walks up and he knows right away there is a branch that is being grown that does not belong. It's a conversation about who's going to be the greatest. But they're missing the point. The disciples miss the point a lot. Like they, they miss the point over and over, right? So like you read story after story and you're like, these guys just don't get it, right? They just miss the point again and again and again. And this time they're arguing about who's gonna be the greatest. Jesus walks up, Jesus who is the word. He walks up and he sees this branch. What's the branch? Competition. Competition. We have so much competition in churches. We'll have eight churches on one street, but we'll never help each other. We'll have 10 churches on one street, but we'll never try to join anything. Nah, 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 nah. We have, I've seen churches that literally share a parking lot where huge buildings are in the same parking lot, but they will not cross the, cross the parking lot in order to meet each other or have lunch, pastors. It's my people and it's your people. We're not one body. Not one thing of Christ. It's what church you go to, how many you got. It's, well, I know that that might be cool, but you should come to our service. You should come to our thing that we're doing here. Listen, when they came to Jesus, remember what he said. They said, someone is baptizing people in your name and they're casting out demons. And we told them to stop. Jesus said, you told them to do what? You told them to stop? He said, yeah, because they're not a part of our crew. That's literally the Bible says they're not a part of our people. And Jesus looking at me says, listen, anyone who is for what I am speaking is not against us. They are for us. What was happening? A branch was forming of competition. Jesus comes with his word. Anyone that is not against us is for us. It's a sword. It jumps out. It cuts the branch. This is what Jesus does in our lives every single day. Amen? So let's move on. We're going to go deeper tonight. So it says that Jesus, he'll do this. And he said, unless you abide in me, you can't have anything. So let's go deeper now. Genesis 1, 2 through 3. Here we go. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the deep waters. 
and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. There's an emptiness. Something's wrong. Jesus doesn't leave you in chaos. He recognizes when you're in chaos, and the Holy Spirit, remember, he's attracted to your chaos. He's not repelled by it. You need to hear me say that again. The Holy Spirit is attracted to places in your lives that are in chaos. He's not repelled by him. Why? Because he's the answer. He's attracted to places where he's needed. He's attracted to places where he's needed. So he comes on the scene and he's hovering. What is he waiting for? He's waiting for God to speak. He's waiting for the word to be spoken. Tonight I wanted to ask you and tell you the title of this message is what the Holy Spirit is waiting for you to do right now so he can move in your life. I'll say it again. What the Holy Spirit is waiting for you to do right now so he can move in your life. This month we're going to have Holy Ghost Month. Anybody excited about that? Right? So we're really focusing on the person of the Holy Ghost. We're focusing on the actions of the Holy Ghost. We're going there. It's going to be amazing. But before we get into this month and Pastor Marco comes next Sunday and introduces this amazing person, not a subject, but a person, not an entity, but a person, not a cloud, but a person. When he does that, if you do not get what I tell you tonight, you'll miss out on this entire month. Because at any moment, the Holy Spirit is looking for the same thing, actually, in every single one of us. At every moment of every day, in order for him to do his job in your life and work, he's looking for the same thing. And I'm going to tell you what that is tonight. He's hovering and he's waiting for what? The word of God to be spoken. Psalm 119, 105. Your word, God, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What is God saying? He's saying that the word of God is what helps us take steps. It's not enough to give us everything that we need. But it's enough that it gives us the next step. So we are in the light here. And we see the word of God and he has us in one place. As we open it, it lights. A lamp doesn't give you more than you need for the next step. That's why the Holy Spirit needs us to read our word daily. Because he wants you to depend on him for the next step. So what the Holy Spirit is looking for is for you to attach something in your life so he can attach to you. What is that? The word. When you have the word of God in your life, fresh daily, you give him something to attach to. So when you open the word, he's there. Then the light changes and he gives you the next step. As you get the next step, you open the word again. And it's only enough. And then he gives you the next step. And you walk into the next step. It's never too much. It's only just enough for the next step. For the next step. For the next step. Jesus will keep you dependent upon him. So he will never give you more than the next step. You got to understand this. Some of y'all are asking for the whole thing. Jesus is like, nope. If I give you the whole answer of how I'm going to save your family, you probably won't believe me, number one. Number two, you'll probably go and mess it up. Let me just give you the next step. How do we get the next step? We open his word and the lamp gives us enough light to take the next step. Okay. First John 5, 7 through 8. We have all these three witnesses, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And all three of them agree. My God, this is such a powerful scripture. The spirit of God, the water, which is the word, and the blood of Jesus are always in agreement. What does that mean? It means if you talk about the blood, the spirit and the word will be present. If you talk about the word of God, the spirit always shows up. If you talk about the spirit and confirm it with the blood of Jesus, the word of God will have power. You see, not one of these things, the spirit, the word, and the blood are ever separated from each other. That's why churches who won't talk about the blood, they don't get the Holy Ghost. That's why houses that are ashamed to talk about repentance and the blood of Jesus, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're putting yourself under a curse. That's why people who don't preach the whole word, 
and totally ignore the Holy Ghost? What are you expecting to happen? You're having a show and God was not invited. John 14, 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. And look at this. He will bring to your remembrance all that I tell you. Now, who is this? This is Jesus speaking. He's saying that when I leave here, I'm sending someone even better. He says it's better for you that I get out of here because the one who's coming, don't worry about me being gone. He's going to bring to your remembrance everything I've said anyway. Well, we know that Jesus is the word. This is Jesus' thoughts. This is Jesus' actions in page. As we look in the word, we're looking at Jesus' face. As we flip to the New Testament, we might be watching how his hands are moving. As we go into the Old Testament, we might be seeing how he walks. As we sit in Song of Solomon, we're seeing his heart for us. Amen? Don't worry about it, my brother. Thank you so much. I'll be good. Let me just pull it up. So this is what's going on. We have a table that's set out here, and we have tools. We got a hammer. We got a screwdriver. We got a nail up here. We got some Windex. Come on now. Some of y'all just need a spray every once in a while. We got ourselves a fork, a spoon, and a knife. Hallelujah. What am I doing up here? Let me tell you. This is how the Holy Ghost works. This is how he works. He waits for you to pre-prepare the job site before he shows up to do the work. He's going to bring back to your remembrance everything I've said. How can you remember something you didn't get? He's going to bring up your answer, but guess what? You didn't pre-prepare the job site. You need healing and depression. Well, he knows the exact tool that you need. He knows exactly which one. He's got them all out. He comes to the job site, and he's super excited. I'm ready to work in you. But because you did not pre-prepare the tools... He sits back in your life and he grieves on your behalf because the Holy Spirit will never take you over against your will. He's a gentleman who waits for you to pre-prepare the job site with the tools needed. So when you need it, he looks and he says, oh, they got what I need. I get to unscrew everything that's screwed up. Oh, they got what they need. They're hard right now, but they got a hammer. I'm about to break that hard heart to pieces. They got what they need. They need a little bit of nudge and ah, ah. They need to get a little bit more bold. They did, but they already pre-prepared the job site. They need to get sprayed with a little cleaner because, man, this world has made them dirty. All they need to do is come in my presence for 30 minutes. I'll wash them clean of all the ucky and all the grossness and all the. He wants you to pre-prepare the job site. Can you imagine going to the doctor? Think about this. If you showed up at the doctor, say you showed up at the dentist, right? <laughs> and you're about to, and you need a root canal. But all he's got for his tools is this. A few nails. How many of y'all know this is about to be a painful surgery? And that's how we expect God to move. We're like, Lord, I, I read my Bible like three weeks ago, you know. I've been in church, you know, I go, I, go, I go consistently, you know, I show up, I do my thing, I've given you something, why can't you just heal me? Why can't you just change my family? Why can't you, man, I pray all the time, but you never listen to me anyway, God. I'm doing all this stuff, man. You know, I even showed up for discipleship one time two years ago. I go to church, you know, once a month, you know what I'm saying? I, I've been there, I offer you something, you got something to work with, what's going on? You healing him and touching him, but you're not healing me. The Holy Spirit is not the one who's withholding something. He's not withholding anything from you. Let me tell you this. Jesus did not come to earth, unzip himself of humanity to step down from heaven, walk down and drop down the elevator of heaven to earth, to go into the womb of a woman for nine months, to be raised inside of a woman, to then be raised up with snot and all the issues depending on us people, to then go through three years of the worst torture and heartache and everything in the world just to say he forgives you at the end, just so he can withhold from you now. I hate it when people are like, man, maybe it's God's will that I'm sick. Listen to me. Listen. Do you really think the father would have took and put on his son all of that just so he could tease you with it? 
God the Father will never put on you anything that his son died to break. God will never put on you anything that his son died to break. That's the reason you won't get healed. You're convinced it's God's will. Because you prayed two times and it didn't happen. Well, if God wanted me to get healed, he would have healed me that one time that I prayed four years ago. Well, if God wanted him to get saved or healed, he would have done something. I mean, I came up to the altar that time. I felt it, but I haven't felt it since. So I guess God just doesn't love me the same way he loves everybody else. Am I speaking to anybody? John 14, 26. He helps us in our weakness. He sent by the Father to bring to your remembrance. Now look at this. Jesus is in the desert, Matthew 4, 4, and it says that the, the devil is tempting him. And he comes to him and he says, if you are the son of God, turn this to bread. We know about the temptation. Jesus responds to him, not with his own intellect or his own feelings. He says, it says in the word, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every mouth, every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The word proceeds is in a continual tense. It means that continues to proceed from the mouth of God. He didn't say you hear God once and you got it for life. No, because the enemy's coming back, y'all. He's coming back for a different area. He said you got to have a proceeding, a continual proceeding. You got to get it tonight. You got to get it tomorrow when you wake up. You got to get it the next day. It better be proceeding. Why? Because you're giving footsteps for the Holy Ghost to connect to. He's connecting something in you tonight. But tomorrow you got to get up and get something that he can work with. Then tomorrow you got to get up and get something he can work with. It's got to continually proceed. But remember, when he says it shall not live by word, it's the word logos. What logos means is it's the thoughts, intent. It's the word it's this it's the thought the mind of God but then uh, Ephesians 5 25 says this he says that uh, Jesus will come husbands love your wives Christ love the church he gave himself for her that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of the water of the word that word is rhema so he's saying you can't live by bread alone but on every logos that comes out of the mouth of God that means you got to get it in the word it's the written word but then he says once you have gotten into the written word, the word rhema means the active living word. It's the speaking now in this season. It's the dream you just had two nights ago that's alive. It wasn't written 2,000 years ago. It's the exact word you need to hear for your life and your husband and your right now. It's the one you need, the living word. And he says, but until you get into the written word I already wrote for you, I can't give you a chance to hear the living word. Until you get into the written word, you don't have a chance to hear the living word. You see, it says that he's going to sanctify the church to make her a spotless bride by the living word. The church will be spotless for Jesus to come. The bride Jesus is coming back for is a bride that knows how to hear the living voice. The living voice washes you. When you hear God's voice, that wasn't just on the page, but that's personal to you. It washes you that very moment from everything unclean, from all demons trying to strangle you, from all hopelessness trying to connect to your life. The living word washes you. The blood of Jesus is the only thing powerful enough to cleanse you of your sin. But the word of God is the only thing great enough and clean enough to cleanse you from a dirty world that you live in. Let me say that again. The blood of Jesus is the only thing powerful enough to cleanse you from your sin. But the living word is the only thing clean enough to cleanse you from the dirtiness of the world you live in every day. You got to take a shower, y'all. Y'all need to get back in the shower. Y'all need to get back in the shower. I promise that hopelessness will come right off. I promise that depression will come right off. So as we close in this, and I'm just going to pray for a few people. Man, this is beautiful in here tonight. Romans 8, 26, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. How do we read the Bible? Number one, we invite the Holy Ghost. Remember, we sit down. We don't open the book unless the teacher teaches us. So we say, Holy Spirit, teach me how to do this. It takes a few seconds. Teach me, Lord. This is your book. I need your help. Number two. We read slowly, inspecting him to speak. Why do we read slowly? Because he has a job to do. This is his tool that he's going to use on you. If you go quick, don't expect the job to be done right. He doesn't have time. You can't keep coming into God saying, I got five minutes, Lord. Do what you can. 
you got to get rid of that in your life. You can't be at the last moment you've been worn out from your day and people, they open their Bible right as they're laying on their pillow. And they're like, I guess I'll read now. What are you expecting? People get up early in the morning just because they want to be one of those early people. And they're like, man, I've got to get up because it's spiritual to get, get up early. So I better be spiritual. i got to get up early. And your eyes are closed the whole time. You know, you're trying to. You're so tired, you know. You're coming you're over here. Oh, there's the word, man. That's what happens. You didn't get nothing out of that. You better go into the bathroom, get some cold water, splash it on your face, go turn on an insanity beach body workout, get swimming, get sweating a little bit, drop down, get some stuff going, get some stuff going. You better wake yourself up because you owe God your best. When he speaks, stop reading and listen. Write it down. He spoke. That might be the only thing you need, what he's about to say. Number four, if it's a promise, put your name in the text. Instead of just reading about Paul saying, you know, I've been through everything, through a lot, through a little. I can do all things through Christ. No, you need to say, man, Gavin, you can do everything because Jesus is strengthening you right now. The Lord is Gabriel's shepherd. The Lord is Dylan's shepherd. You are my shepherd right now. I'm not lost. I know I feel lost, but I got a shepherd. If I just look at his face, you're calling me back. I know your voice. You're bringing me back. Number five, you got to make that into a prayer. Once he spoke, you've been quiet. You wrote it down. You turned it into your own personal word, and then you make it into a prayer. First John 5, 14 through 15. This is why a lot of your prayers don't get answered, because right here, if we have the confidence that if we pray anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, wait a second. Some of y'all don't pray because you're convinced God's not even listening to you. The reason why we do not have confidence in prayer, it's right there. This is the confidence we have. If we pray anything according to his will, he hears us. What is he saying? You're not sure it's God's will, what you're praying. Therefore, you don't have confidence in your prayer. If you're not sure it's God's will, what you're praying, of course you have no confidence. But if you'll pray, when you get in this word, he tells you the living voice in your spirit. You see it right there. This is for me. You have full confidence what you're praying is God's will. And every word that you pray, that's God's will. What does the Bible said? We can have confidence that we will receive whatever we asked for. Prayers that will never be ever denied are prayers that are prayed because you prayed God's word and reminded him of what he said back into his ears. The greatest prayers you can pray are the prayers where it's God's own words and you remind him of what he says. Get into this word. Let the word help you do the prayer. Let the word pray for you. Stop trying to think of prayers. Stop wearing yourself out trying to be spiritual. Get into the word, get slow, get with God, and let him tell you what to pray. Just pray what's in here. He will never look in the mirror and deny himself. And that's the mirror. Jesus will look at it, put it back in God's face and say, you said, you said about my mama, you said about my daddy, here it is. You said about my family, here it is. Everyone for just five minutes. Sir, right here in the yellow cap, would you stand for me? Just right here, right here. Ma'am, right here. Yes, yellow cap. I can't see you that well. I'm so sorry. Right here, you have uh, sunglasses on your head. Yes, ma'am. Would you stand up, please? Sir, right here in this collared shirt, bald head right here. Thank you, sir. Stand. Ma'am, you're right here on the end. You're in the black shirt. You're just standing looking at me right here on the end of this row. That's you. Yes, ma'am. That's you. Please stand up. Thank you, Lord. Just a moment. Thank you, Lord. Ma'am, I, um, I see a screwdriver and a hammer. I see that God has been telling you, he says, I have the things available for you. I'm waiting for an official invite into the areas of your life that you still have control of. The reason is because there are things in your life, you tried some things in the past. You've also been hurt by many things, even church you've been hurt by as well. 
But God says, listen, I have the tools that can do the job. I'm the only God that can unscramble eggs. I know exactly what to do for you. I know when I can do it. But I need you. I have the tools, but I need you to hand over the job site. The job site's your heart, ma'am, and it's certain people in your family that you truly desperately love. Jesus has seen you. He's seen your prayers. He's ready to move. But he's asking for total control. I see in the next 60 days, ma'am, that you're going to have gift after gift after gift coming your direction. Supernatural gifts come in your direction. Um, I don't know if it's somebody you know, somebody close to your family that had an injury as well. I, I just, there's something physical, like a deep, and it's on the lower part of the body. God is going to show you that this is going to mend up and be completely healed. I don't know who that is. That's really powerful. Um, there's somebody as well has uh, blood pressure issues in your family going to be completely healed. There's deep, deep, there's diabetes that's in there. It's going to be completely healed, ma'am. This is your family I'm talking about now. Praise God. God bless you. And uh, because you are standing in the gap, he showed me the picture of Noah. It said Noah alone found grace in God's eyes. And so his entire family was welcomed onto the boat, even though they didn't find grace. Because you will do the right thing, because you're standing in the right place. God is inviting your entire family in. They're not out of his grasp. They're not out of his grasp. Do you receive that in Jesus' name? Lift up your hands and thank him right there. Thank you so much. Ma'am, right here with the sunglasses on, and we're just going to do a few minutes. I will let you out on time, but, but there's so many needs that are in the building here. Please don't miss church this month. Please don't miss church. Um, Ma'am, right here with the sunglasses, what is your name? Kimmy. Kimmy, the reason I felt I had to ask your name is the moment you said your name, I saw a roller coaster going down each letter, and God's saying that's how your life has felt. You felt like this is a roller coaster. This is like I'm at a high and then I drop. Then I'm at a high and then I drop. It's like where's the consistency? What is going to happen next? What is going on? And I just believe, would you lift your hands right now, ma'am? Because I want to take the spirit of fear and anxiety away from you right now. A fear of what's going to happen next. There's a dread, a deep dread. And I release you of it in the name of Jesus. You can trust God and not have any fear or dread, not have any confusion about what's going to happen. God is already in the future. He's already prepared the place for you in the future, even though you're not there yet. If you'll just obey the next step he's told you, he says he promises you will not miss the mark of where you're supposed to be. God is in the future. He's just asking you to do the next step. He knows how to lead you to himself. He's already there. And in Jesus' name, I thank you that you receive confidence right now. Ma'am, as well, there's dreams and sleep. You need a real healing in your sleep. And God's saying, I'm going to give you supernatural rest. He's saying as well, in the middle of your sleep, I'm going to start giving you many dreams, which will be prophetic words. Make sure you sleep with a notebook and a pen next to your bed as well, because you'll write down those when you wake up. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to give you uh, the prophetic words in order to give you uh, prayer points to know exactly which direction to pray. But also, he's going to heal. In your dream, he's working on your heart. I see him that you're going to be on the operating table. This happens in the Bible. God, Jesus himself, will literally reach into your subcon in your dream. When you're not able to resist him, he waits till you're asleep. Some people have so much going on while they're awake, God literally can't speak to them until they're asleep because they won't get quiet enough. But he will work with you. And he says, in your dreams, is it going to begin knitting pieces of your heart together because you've had betrayal and you've had much hurt. In the name of Jesus, be totally touched by his love right now, Kimmy, in Jesus' name. Sir, just real quickly, I just want to tell you, sir, I see that you have massive hammers in both hands. Jesus said, even though you feel that you failed much, I made you into someone who knocks down walls knocks down walls and the walls are barriers between people's hearts who will never come to church he said i gave you the hammers to go out of the building break down the hearts and bring them in so he says one of these hammers is the word of god in your mouth and the other one is going to be god says it's going to be the influence of people that you know 
you are a connector. You have connections with people that are influential here. You have a connection with this man, this woman. You, you know how to connect people. And God says, I'm going to open up that connector side of your life. And I'm going to get into, when you meet somebody, you'll know exactly who to connect them to. That person will get them to their destiny, the next step. You know exactly to connect this person. And he said, I'm going to give you all the credit to your heavenly account, even though you won't feel like you're the one who people are seeing. And they might not even give you the credit. But he tells you right now, sir, just know I see you. I'm giving you the credit to your account. You please me. Don't go anywhere else. Stay in the house. Stay strong. Stay in the word. Because I'm forming in you a hammer that will break down any resistance. Praise God for you. Thank you, God. Ma'am, God uses your prayers to change nations. He, when you call out to him, God listens. It says he tunes his frequency. That's what I'm hearing God say. I tune the frequencies to hear you on the channel nice and clear. Because you have the faith to believe what you pray. But he says now is the time of direct assignments. I'm going to give you specific people, specific tasks. And in the spirit, you're going to take these tasks. You're going to take them and accomplish what I'm telling you to do. As you pray, you will see things change with politicians and the country. As you pray, and he says, there are people who I have. I have multiple people all over the country that are doing this. But it's not everyone in the church. Jesus says, it's like God saying, it's like his heart's weeping right now. He's saying, I wish I could use everyone's prayers in the church. But he says, not e everybody even believes who I am, who I say I am. But there are few who do believe he is who he says he is. And I took those prayers. I connected to this prayer. I connected to this prayer. I connected to this prayer. And he says, because I have you, the remnant for me. He says, there is nothing ever out of my control. As long as I have people like you to pray, things will change the way they're supposed to. Ma'am, I just want you to know something. Your life is very valuable. I see a huge financial breakthrough as well. I don't say this to everybody that's coming to you in the next few months as well. I see that you're going to be in a completely different place because God's going to show you how to give. He's going to give you a different heart for that. He's also going to bless you to be able to bless people. Ma'am, wow. In the next five years, you're going to be able to be a person who writes checks to answer people's needs, to make their dreams come true. Ma'am, your entire life's about to shift. I see, ma'am, that you will have, listen, listen, you will have millions of dollars passed through your hands into the thing it's supposed to go to, through your hands to the thing it's supposed to go to. I know it might be hard to believe right now, but I'm telling you, I see it. I see it as clear as day because you will not be one who keeps it for yourself with greed. You will be one who he can touch that will pass through to meet the needs of the people who are begging for him right now. Be blessed, ma'am. Every person, wow, there's so much to do, but I'm going to pray right now. So much to do. There's so many ways that the Holy Spirit wants to touch and move people. Please do not miss this month. I want to say a couple things. I will be ministering this month multiple times. Pastor Markle will be ministering. You guys saw the video. We have Pastor Robert coming from AZ. We got different, I mean, it's going to be amazing. We have so many people who are coming and going to be ministering here. Please don't miss church. This is why I'm telling you this. Obviously, we don't want to miss church at any time, but I'm telling you, whenever you give the Holy Spirit space to move, anything could literally happen. Anything could happen, and you want to be there when it happens. You just In this atmosphere, it's different. Online, I believe people are getting something tonight, but when you're in this atmosphere, there is something that is different. Be in the house. People are going to get healed this month. I'm telling you, you've had issues this whole month. You're going to get healed. You literally will physically have the pain you'll walk in with and you'll walk out without it. People are going to have hope this month. They're going to get deliverance of all kinds of spiritual witchcrafts going to happen. Deliverances are about to happen. It's amazing. And one of the main places that's going to happen is on October the 15th. I want to invite you personally myself from 9 to 3. I promise there will be breaks and everything in between. I'm going to be speaking and teaching you what the Great Commission says. It teaches you how to heal the sick. We're going to watch Jesus teach you how to heal the sick. That you can take it out and do it even in your family, on the streets, anywhere. We're going to teach you how to cast out demons. What that actually is. Is it something weird? Is it something that's even in the church or is it still real? I think most of y'all know it's still real. I'm going to actually have a time as well to talk to you about dreams and visions. Many of you dream at night, but you have no idea what they mean. You've written so many of them down. I'm going to give you the basics about how to interpret your own dreams. I'm going to show you how to actually know God's voice through dreams, and we'll actually interpret dreams on the spot for many of you in the building. I'm also going to talk to you about how to be led by the Holy Ghost, how to know what that feeling is that's in the pit of your stomach that gives you boldness to speak, how to know whether to move, how to know whether to touch. You do not want to miss this time. Please come on the 15th.
Everybody close your eyes here. This is the ending of the service. Everybody close your eyes, please. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Are you sure without a shadow of a doubt you know Jesus? It would be such a shame for you to come see God beginning to move in this place, see God touching certain people and speaking directly to them, but you walk out not knowing the person we're talking about. Are you sure without a doubt that if something happened to you when you went home tonight, that you would be able to know if I woke up, I'd wake up looking at Jesus? Is your eternal peace, do you have peace in your soul or are you still wondering? If you say, I've never received Jesus before, or if you say, you know what, Gavin, I did at one time, but I need to rededicate my life. I have not been serious about my relationship with God. This is your opportunity. We have somebody already raising their hand. Do not wait for me. Put your hand in the air. I choose Jesus right now all over this building. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand right now. Put it up high. Not ashamed. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Look at all these people. Give it to Jesus. Come on. Come on. Put your hand in. I'm unashamed. I want this Jesus you're talking about. I want to be closer to him. This is your moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, everyone else staying seated. I want you right now who are lifting your hands. Stand up quickly. Come up to the front. I promise I will not embarrass you. I will not ask you any questions. Just quickly. Quickly. Give my hand as they come. Everyone else stay seated. Just you. Come up. Come up. Come up. Right up to the front. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come. Give my hand. Give my hand like it's your mama. Give my hand like it's your sister. Give my hand like it's your brother. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, yes. Come on, give my hand. Look at all these souls. There's still some people out there. Don't let this moment pass you by. Come on up. We welcome you. This is your home. We welcome you. Look at all these souls. Look at all these souls. Look at all these souls. Come on, clap for them. Celebrate, celebrate the new brothers and sisters. Come on up, come on. Close, close, come up close. Come up close, all the way over here too, all the way over here. Bless you, man. Amen. What up, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, all the way over to the side right here. All the way over to the side. Wow. Wow, people are still coming up. My God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Now, everybody who's up there, quickly, this is so important. First of all, this is the best decision you've ever made in your life. This is handing over something. Every issue and problem that you had is not going to automatically solve itself because of this. But let me tell you something. You will walk away no longer alone. Listen to me. You're going to walk away no longer feeling you're by yourself. You're not going to have to go through this life alone anymore. Jesus has been waiting. He's knocked on your door. That's why you came up. The Bible says you can't even receive Jesus unless the Holy Spirit was knocking on your door. He talked to you and you obeyed. Thank you for making that step. This is the most, hey, sir, I just want to shake your hand real quick, man. Guys, Brad, this is a new life, man. Praise God for you, brother. This is incredible. I'm so excited for you. But here's number two. Listen, this moment is the moment right here where you be between you and God, not anybody else. You need to give over all your sins to the Lord. You know what you've done. God knows it too. It's not a surprise to him. But this is the point where you allow him to cleanse you. So between you and God right now, just offer up. Now, close your eyes. Offer up to the Lord what it is. You know the sins that are on your heart. You know the things that you're ashamed of. Just offer them to him. He already knows them. He's not ashamed of you. But this is the time where you come clean, confessing your sin to the Lord right now. This is the time where you come clean. As you're doing that, the blood of Jesus is washing over you. And it's removing every single one of these sins. Look at this. It's touching you right there. See, that's the power of the blood right there. It's a, people are being touched right here just while you're doing this. You see, because Jesus knows how to cleanse you. He is going to remove all of these. Every sin you say, he's going to remove it. Go ahead, just tell him. He's removing it. Tell him he's removing it. He's helping you. He's there now in that case. I know what's going on in your mind. I see what you're ashamed of. I'm going to help you with that. I'm going to help you. You're giving over your heart to him right now. You're giving over your life. You're giving over all your sins. Now look at me again. Now that you've confessed your sins, you've told the Lord... The blood of Jesus is about to cleanse you. You're never going to have to think about it again. The only person who will remind the Lord of your past will be you. Because he's separating it from the east, as far as the east and the west. He's throwing it away. He's ready to move on with you. He's ready to move on in your future. Okay? And here's the last thing. This is not enough to make you a disciple of Jesus. This is a first step. 
this is so important that you came up today. But this alone does not save you alone. You actually have to truly give over lordship of your life now. That means you got to say, I've been the boss. I've made my own decisions. I've made my own things. But you know what, Lord? You're the boss now. If you have something to correct in me, God, you need to do that. If you have something you want me to change, I'm going to let you do that. If you're going to shift everything about my life, you need to say, I give over the reins now. I know it's scary to lose control, but it's not scary to lose control to the most loving Savior. The most loving Savior. Who cares more about you? He knows what you want more than you know what you want. He knows what you need more than you know what you need. So in this moment, you're truly saying, not only am I saying a prayer, I'm giving over lordship of my life. It's so important I say that. Thousands of people say prayers at altars, but they never make a life change because they never made God the boss. This is your time. Everyone closing their eyes. Everybody in the church, please say something. Some of y'all have family members up here. I'm so happy for you tonight. But every player in the church, I want you all to say out loud, especially you who are there, repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for being my God. I thank you for being my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for dying on a cross so that I could have eternal life with you. Thank you for your blood. I believe you rose again from the dead and that you're living in my heart right now. I'm no longer guilty. I'm no longer guilty. I'm no longer guilty. Come on, say it. I'm no longer guilty. Let yourself go. I'm no longer guilty. I am freed now because of what you did not because of what I've done take over my life be my boss in Jesus name amen would you all turn around please turn around turn around would you all stand up and welcome welcome the new brothers and sisters into the kingdom of God come on welcome them welcome them welcome them you're in the family now welcome to the family welcome to the family welcome to the family of God welcome to the family of God Woo! Everybody, I want to tell you so much. Thank you for tonight. God loves you. Please be here on Sunday as Pastor Marco is going to be talking about the Holy Ghost. This is going to be an intimate, incredible month. We love you. We thank you for coming tonight. Please get people to come on Sunday. And for the rest of this month, we'll talk to you soon. And God bless you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you.